Now let's take a look at the Magic Wand tool. I have the Magic Wand 1 and Magic Wand 2 documents open already. You can find those in the Chapter 2 folder. Okay, so we've looked at the marquee tools, which are very limited in creating selections, and then we've looked at our lasso tools, which could be a little difficult to work with depending on what type of selection you're creating and how patient you are. So let's go ahead and look at the Magic Wand. The Magic Wand can be found under the Quick Selection tool. By clicking and holding Quick Selection, we can then select Magic Wand. This is one of the oldest selection tools in Photoshop and was probably the first one people really got excited about because of its capabilities. You'll notice that my cursor has changed to a magic wand and on our options panel at the top, we see the word tolerance. The word tolerance talks about the range of color and tone that Photoshop actually selects. So what I've created here in our first document is a sample with just a gradient of colors from blue down to white and then a solid rectangle of yellow to kind of explain tolerance and help you understand what the magic wand is doing before you actually use a real image. The magic wand is really good on images that have solid areas of color that you want to remove because it does a pretty good clean and quick job. So as I said that number 32 works on the range of color and tone from the color that you click on. So if I start here, let's start in the top middle portion of our document in that kind of middle of the gradient from the blue to the white, I'm going to click. So when I clicked here, Photoshop selected all the surrounding pixels based on that exact pixels color that I clicked that fell within a total range of 32 lighter and darker shades of that color. So when I clicked in this example, it selects 32 shades lighter to the right and 32 shades darker to the left. If I click over here on the right where it's lighter, it does the same thing. And you'll notice that the rectangle is pretty much the same size no matter where I click because we're looking at the number 32. If I click on the yellow area, which is a solid yellow, you'll notice that it takes the entire rectangle because it's only one shade, one tone. So the 32 really didn't make a difference on this one because it's one color or one shade. So if we reduce this number, let's say to, to a 20, and I click again in that gradient area at the top, you'll notice that the range, that little rectangle, gets narrower because the number is smaller. Again, the yellow is completely selected because it's a solid color. Let's go higher. Let's try 80. Again, when we click in the gradient area, you'll notice that my selection range gets wider because again, it's working off of colors ranged lighter and darker from the exact area where I click. Now another thing you're noticing is that it's only selecting the colors below the yellow box or above the yellow box, even though they're in the same range. Well that's happening because of this word contiguous on the options panel. It's checked by default and that means that the pixels actually have to be touching each other for them to remain in the selection. So that yellow box in the middle is keeping the selections from above the box to be selected. So if I were to uncheck contiguous and I were to click again, now you'll see that the selection has been added to both the top and the bottom. Let's go ahead and deselect that selection so you can see it again because it kind of looked like it might have just added the selection rather than doing it all at one time. So Command D or Control D on Windows and again I'm going to click and you'll notice now that it selects the top and the bottom on either side of the yellow rectangle because I no longer have contiguous selected. Now what I meant by the adding to selections on the options panel here on the top left, you have some icons that add to a selection, subtract from a selection, and intersect with selection. This means if I choose add to selection, you'll see a little plus sign on my magic wand tool. And when I click, it will add more area to my selection. If I choose the minus selection option, subtract from selection, if I click over here, it's going to take that part away. So I can quickly add and subtract areas of my selection based on clicking and my tolerance. So let's go ahead and do a Command D, deselect or Control D. I'm going to turn contiguous back on and let's lower our number back down to 32. And let's take a look at that again. I'm going to click in the middle. You'll notice that I have the selection just in the, the middle range. Again, I'm looking at 32 higher and 32 lower on the color tolerance. And if I hold my shift key, 
you'll see the plus sign is added to my magic wand allowing me to add to my selection. And my selection doesn't have to be in the same range because I can click in any area I want. So holding the shift key allows me to add without going up to the options panel. You'll notice that when I'm holding the shift key, the add button is selected. And when I release my shift key, it goes back to the default. The alt key or option key will subtract my selection. So you can see now I have the minus sign added to my magic wand and I didn't have to go all the way up to the options panel, make that selection, then click and then go back up. I can just quickly use shortcut keys to add or subtract for my selection. Okay, command D to deselect. Now let's look at our tolerance one more time. Let's bring it all the way down to one. Now a tolerance of one tells us it's not gonna select very much based on our color because again, we're looking at the range lighter and darker from where we click. So if I click with a tolerance of one, let's see what happens. I just got pretty much a straight line of color selection because I'm working a gradient. So it's only finding that one area of shade because it doesn't have any tolerance to move up or move down from where I clicked. And again, I had the contiguous on, so it only selected on the top. Let me deselect that, Command D or Control D. The highest number you can put in is 255. If I type 255 and put a selection, you'll notice it selects the entire document. That's because that's going 255 lower and 255 higher of the color and tone that I've selected, which is the largest range you can select. Command D or Control D to deselect. Let me go back down to one one more time. Let's click on the yellow area with a one and you'll notice that now it even found that there may be nuances in the yellow color. Even though we thought it was solid, because we picked a one, it's really gonna restrict that color range. Okay, I think we're ready to use a real picture now. You've got the idea of the magic wand and how to add and subtract from your selection. And you've also seen what the word contiguous means and we've learned what tolerance means. So let's select our magic wand two document that we already have open. And you see we have a butterfly. Now if we wanted to, we could use our magnetic lasso tool, like we did on the flower previously, but again, that would be really tedious and it's a really big picture and it would be pretty hard to click and drag around it. So we're gonna go ahead and try our magic wand. Let's go ahead and set our magic wand tolerance up to 50. And if we deselect contiguous, watch what happens. I'm gonna click in the top left area of my document window. No reason why, it just seems to be an area with the, you know, the solid color behind it. And I'm gonna click. Now, I've got my tolerance at 50, so again, I'm looking at a range of color and tone, lighter and darker from where I clicked. Because I have the contiguous deselected, all my pixels don't have to be touching to get to the other color. So I've actually grabbed parts of the butterfly inside on the wings that I didn't wanna select. So contiguous, Command D or Control D to deselect, Contiguous will keep my selection on the outside of the butterfly because all the pixels have to touch. So I went ahead and clicked again with the tolerance of 50 with contiguous turned on. I clicked on the upper left hand side of my document and you can see now it went around my butterfly and didn't go inside of it. Okay, I'm gonna come over here to the middle section here above the butterfly's head and you can see this is the area where the colors really kind of change and I'm gonna to add to my selection. So how can I quickly do that without having to go up to the options panel? I'm gonna hold my shift key. It adds the plus sign to my cursor and now I can click and I can add to my selection. Hey, that turned out pretty good. Now, this time, did we select the butterfly or did we select the background? On the other couple of examples, we've actually selected the object and then we've had to inverse to remove our selection. In this case, we've actually selected the background, not the butterfly. So if we press delete at this point and choose white as our background, we've removed the background from our butterfly. Command D or Control D to deselect. And you can see we did a pretty good job except on the areas of the antenna, which isn't too bad for just learning how to create selections.